ルリフトジャパン。革新のカーボンベゼル。ブルートゥース搭載。ジーショック。カシオ。横浜。The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valentine. Made in Japan. Breed. 伝統と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングクラッチ。ORC、究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対摩耗性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダ What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. 
EO RSR Ichiban. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, drift fans all around the world. Here we are for the top 34 of the top 23 of the top 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at Okayama International Circuit in the Okayama Prefecture. I apologize, guys. Kenny was all over the place. You know why? Because it's super cold up here <laughs> in the is. judging stand right now um, here at Okayama International Circuit. Uh, like you said, we are here back for the top 32 after the exciting qualifying we had yesterday. Uh, we are kind of early in the morning, but we have a short day um, where the sun goes down pretty early here. So we're going to have to try to get this all sorted by then. So we have the top 32 starting now. Um, and after that, we're going to have a short break in between and uh, the top 16 after that. So there you guys are right there. Uh, as you see on the screen right here, that is Tom Saiba to the right, and to the left is Yoichi Imamura. Imamura is one of our judges, and Tom Saiba is the Japanese side commentator uh, for the Japanese side live stream. Yes, he's also on the PA system, so he's definitely talking to the crowd, which we have a pretty good uh, crowd out here early this morning. I mean, it's 9.08, so I mean, I feel like I just yeah, woke up. Yeah, no, uh, Okayama, we always have a, uh, a lot of people, a great crowd here, but how you guys doing? I'm Robin Nishida, I'm one of the judges, and also I'll be commentating. Uh, oh, and you and are? I'm, I'm <laughs> Kenny Harris. See, I'm already losing my words, so hopefully I don't do that the whole time for this top 32 it, battle. It's really cold, and it's really hard to talk. But uh, we also have a guest judge right there. Our third judge today is Brian Egger, all the way from the East Coast, USA, and it's probably super... Or it's not that early yet. Yet. Right? Yeah, it's still... He's still okay. Oh, okay. It's 8 o'clock right now. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see him later this afternoon. And he's going to end up staying up till like 4 a.m. So. Exactly. He'll yeah. be judging from afar. I'll be plugging in his vote. Next is going to be the Motor Games Girls. Woo! That's uh, Marina to the... Or, I'm sorry. Miharu from the left. We've got Minami next to... Minami is Miori, and far right we have Marina. Marina actually speaks English, so um, she does some of our um, pit reports, pit yeah. reports and stuff too. So we'll see if we can get some pit reports. But you know what I know? One thing: those girls are pipe freezing right now. Oh yeah, most definitely. It's about a brisk 56 cool degrees out here, but uh, overcast. Hopefully, it'll hold up for us today. I'm not going to say what we're expecting, but I'm expecting good weather the rest of the day. 
Yeah, here we go. So let's check out yesterday's okay. top five qualifiers here. Number five, uh, qualifying number five, car number 36, Kazumi Takashi in the BMW. E92 is a TMS Racing Team Silent Tire. BMW, I love the way he uh, approaches the touch and go. He kicks a lot of angle there. It's really exciting. He's got an 89. Look at that. Deep angle. Yeah, he's going to make so it definitely challenging for his chase drivers. Next up is number qualifying fourth, number 57. Kanta, he got a 90 point qualify run. And man, this kid right here, phenomenal driver, coming out, killing it in his big body 100. You said kid, he's a grown man. He is, but I mean, to, to me, he's, he's a lot younger than me for sure. Yeah. But yeah, same thing, very exciting uh, run right there, 90 point, only one point away from the fifth qualifier, but right here, the third qualifier from yesterday is a car number 27, Hokuto Matsuyama, driving the trail motor, Apex Racing, uh, GR86. There's a little hiccup there, but other than that, outside zone area, very exciting, very wide line through everything other than the outside zone. And he is our points leader right now, so he's got a lot to hold right here. Hopefully he'll make it into the top 16. Look at that. Knocked over both of the cones with his wing. Man, that's very impressive. That that uh, wall right there is very intimidating after hitting that bump. But next up right there, the champ himself, two-time champ so far, no, qualifying second with a 91, number eight, Koichi Amashita. Beautiful job right there. Came out on his second qualify run and came out banging. Last year, he actually qualified first year, so definitely good to see yeah, him in the top race. On. And it was exciting to see that he was able to change things up. He got like an 80-something at his first run. Yes. He changed everything up and came in. And this is the talk of the night yesterday, car number 177, Hiroya Minoa wins the qualifying, gets first in his GR Yaris Team Cusco Racing uh, vehicle. Got the, he got a 91, but he tied 91 with Yamashita, and uh, his second best run uh, was higher than Yamashita, so he came in first, but only 13 years old. I'm not going to say it's the most exciting driving, but he is very precise on the line. He takes the car all the way out to everywhere the car has to be. So, and enough angle and a lot of throttle. There you go, 13 year old, look at that. He said he'll try his best for tomorrow. Um, taking on what he has today. And I must say, that chassis right there is very challenging because there's no overhang in the rear. So <laughs> yeah. you really got to send it and really have commitment to especially outer zone three where that wall is. Yeah, because you rear, like let's say if your rear bumper hits the wall, it's pretty much your tires like right there. Probably like only a few inches away. And here we are for the top 32. So if you missed out, go check out the qualify. You'll have some time in between top 32, top 16. Can check it out. If you want, you can throw it live on another, you know, cell phone, tablet, whatever you'd like, just to see how these drivers really placed out their lead runs, what they're going to do today. But so far, just in practice this morning, we saw some amazing runs. It looks like these drivers are really ready to have a tight tandem battle. Oh man, and I have to say this weather and how cool it is, I think it's really nice for the cars too. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of the cars don't have to uh, fight cooling issues either because it's oh, really yeah. cool out. It is, it is. And there's the straight right there. So that right, that area where the start gate is is not visible to us. We rely obviously on the camera, but right when the 321 pops up, they pop up right where that uh, Dunlop bridge comes out and we're able to see them they're visible to us but looks like the first battle is pulling up to the line right now and right there that's the young buck himself Hiroya Minoa rolling up number one qualifier and he'll be going against Kenichi Takashima and I believe that these two had battled before at an MSC event which is a feeder series of the FDJ2 and they were both um, pretty much just like an amateur event uh, Minoa and Takashima went against each other, and that's, uh, uh, I guess, Takashima beat Minoa back then. Um, now, maybe the tables has turned because Minoa qualified first, Takashima qualified 32nd. So for this, uh, for Minoa, this might be a revenge match. Exactly, and it looks like we're going to be kicking it off here now for the 2022 Round 5 here for the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at the Okayama International Circuit. And here they are coming through the 3-2-1. Nice job by Minoa in the lead position coming around. Man, but look at the proximity by the chase coming around. Looks like he's taking a shallower line and Minoa just doing his thing in that lead position. 
running around to this outer zone three, wow. right up against the wall, and once again, diving in and just finding himself in a wrong predicament in that chase position. So I have to say, you know, Minoa just doing his thing. Uh, nothing is really, uh, you know, he's not even flinching to anything, even though this car is right behind him breathing on his neck. He just kicks it out. Uh, great job as a lead driver, takes it all the way to the outside, a lot of throttle, good enough angle, kicks it out right there to the touch and go. Uh, because, but uh, watching Takashima behind, it looks like he is a little too, um, he's concentrating a little too much on trying to keep up. And uh, maybe he thought he was gonna be faster, but he actually isn't. And he pretty much choked himself up, which uh, there was a huge correction. Um, right before the touch and go and also at uh, after the outside zone three. So most likely uh, the chase car is gonna get an incomplete. And uh, now we're gonna have to see what's gonna happen when they switch places. Yeah, he definitely found himself in the wrong area in that outer zone one. It looked good from the start, but it looks like, I don't know if he was focusing more on proximity than anything else, but you could see right here after leaving outer zone three, he choked up uh, on the line and definitely found himself really in the bad situation causing him to stall. So next, the tables are gonna be turned. We'll see how this goes. Looks like they're pulling back around. And yeah, so Okayama International Circuit, it's like I said, an international circuit. It's 2.3 miles, 3.7 kilometers long, massive. And we just have a small eighth of a section of this track dedicated, or outer zone three is actually the infield. So there's an actual drop in elevation, a little bump right there that they fall into. You'll see a little disturbance from their vehicles coming in that outer zone three toward the wall. But a lot of the drivers have said the grip level is definitely different leaving from the track to that inside zone or that outer zone three due to the fact that that's not really a utilized part of the track. So they definitely hooked us up out here at Okoyama and paved that area and made it nice for us to call home here for the Formula Drift uh, Japan Series. Now we have Takashi Mohini and Minoa giving chase. All right, let's see how Takashima's gonna do this time around. He really has to focus filling the zones and staying outside in those zones. And look at that, Mino early on, coming right there, hugging right up against him. And wow, he came in real hot. Here he is trying to clean himself up through the touch and go, coming around to that outer zone three. Leaving outer zone three, looks like Mino has struggled a little right there and all through the track for that chase position. Let's see early on what happened here with Minoa. It looks like he charged hard and wasn't expecting the uh, decel by Takashima as much as uh, he did. Here they are coming through the three, two, one. Coming through the touch and go. Nice job collecting himself here. See, he stayed wide, unlike Takashima right in that area where he dove in and tried to mimic the line from, from uh, Takashima. All right, so let me go ahead and explain to you a little. Um, this is, um, I'm pretty sure that this, all three of the judges are probably feeling this way. Minoa made a major error at the initiation but it looked like he was very, very shallow. And regardless if we take it as a incomplete, both cars incompleted when they're chasing. And we're gonna have to look at the lead runs. Uh, Minoa's run was probably better. So here you go, Minoa gets the win. Um, and uh, we took it as Minoa's chase was not an incomplete. It was very, very bad because he did uh, make a mistake behind Takashima, but um, either or, I was just explaining, even if it wasn't incomplete, um, he would have won anyways with the lead runs. So this kind of shows how important the lead run is. Next up, already lined up, ready to go, is going to be Takatoshi Imamaida going against Ikuo Saito. All right, so we got the wild wild driver Imamaida. We saw him. Yeah, he uh, took, he wiped out there in outer zone one, went a little airborne there. Yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, very exciting. But also we have Saito, a veteran um, in FDJ series. 
Uh oh, uh, I guess there was a pylon touch. He hit one of the cones. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this um, style, the lead car, there's a chicane, so they just don't run away. So it's not a drag race. Uh, the lead car has to drive through the chicane, not hit the cones. Uh, they have to not leave the light before the light all disappears. Um, if you do three of that, that's three strikes. You get an incomplete for that run. So that's one strike for Yumamaida. The chase car could leave whenever they want, um, and they just drive straight out. But it's really hard to pace themselves uh, if they leave a little early because of like you know power difference and whatnot. Um, so you're gonna have to wait. You have to make sure that you're not in the lead car's way either. Yeah, let's see how they're gonna do on their first run. Like I said before, Ima Maida is gonna be in the lead. He's been coming in real hot to outer zone one. So I'm curious if Saito's anticipating that. And you can see right there, Saito jumping a little bit to make sure he doesn't get lost in this straight coming Another up Another cone hit. Uh-oh. I ain't gonna lie, Ima Maida's uh, S14 there is quite wide. It is. But this is nothing new. It's practice. He went through qualifying. Nothing's changed in the chicane. So he's got to collect himself. This is top 32. There's a little bit of nerves probably floating, mm -hmm. but he needs to go mm -hmm. and brush that off and, you know, make it happen. We only had, like, I think in FD Japan, we had, we had we only had one driver that got three strikes. And I think there was one driver in the FD US series as well that got three strikes a while back. Wow. And, you know, I must say, Robbie's driven a full-size high ace van through these at a pretty good speed. So um, yeah, it's, there's it's no doable. excuse. Yes. <laughs> I'll probably hit it, but, not, you know, Robbie didn't hit it. So we're good here. So here we are. Looks like Ima might have taken a little bit more time there. And here he is coming up, made it through, ready to go for this second tandem battle of the day. And here he is coming around. Saito coming hard with some angle, entering into outer zone one. Ima Maida collecting himself, dipping two tires there through outer zone one. And man, wow. Saito just not anywhere to be found. Ima Maida holding that angle. Oh, huge correction coming to that inside or outer zone three there. And you can see when he left outer zone two, he threw some hard angle, but realized it was way too much and he was in the wrong line for that outer zone three. Um, uh, I'm, I'm always dead honest, so, uh, I'd have to say, uh, pretty messy, uh, but I just saw the chase car was three tires off at outside zone one, so that's pretty much going to be an incomplete. The lead run was not clean. Um, yeah, kind of a messy tandem. We'll see how they're going to clean it up when Saito is going to be in the lead while Ima Maida is in the chase. Here's another overview by our drone team. So yeah, it looks like Ima Maida was safe on that zone. Even though he dipped two tires, that's definitely going to ding him. But that huge correction he made leaving outer zone two to outer zone three will definitely affect him. All right, I just want to check out another replay just to make sure. Um, it looked like the chase car was off tire, three tires off. I just want to make sure to see because uh, maybe the lead car was as well. Let's check this replay out here. He Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, it looks like both lead and chase were. So Saito's got to throw a solid lead run for his lead while Ima Maida has to make something happen in that chase position. So we'll see here as they roll back up to yeah, the start I think, line. So. Um, I'd have to say it was very close, but at the same time, you know, they leave it in the judges' hands, and I'm going to call it, you know, incomplete for both uh, lead and chase. And to be honest, it was a really mess, uh, messy uh, lead and chase run right there. So we'll see what they can do. And the tables are turned, and here we are. Saito, Ikuo Saito is coming up into the 3-2-1. Ima Maida trying to collect himself, close it, that proximity, and there he is right there coming around. Trying to mimic what Saito's doing, but not able to get all the way out. And Ima Maida right there making a huge mistake through outer zone one. And Saito just doing his thing, flying around, not quite deep enough into that outer zone three. But trying to get this lead <laughs> at run. At this point, I mean, at this point, it's whoever makes one clean run. Um, because 
pretty much everything else was an incomplete. And that's what we don't want to see, but hey, here we are. This is top 32. We're kind of, you know, narrowing it down to the best battles we're going to see today. And, you know, going back to the first battle we had, I'd have to say, even if, uh, let's say, even if, um, even if the uh, lead car didn't incomplete at the, um, on the earlier run, let's say if that was not a three tire off, he still made more mistakes than Saito's lead run and pretty much. All right, there you go, Eggert's going with Saito, Nishida Saito, so it looks like Ikuo Saito is gonna be moving into the top 16. Um, yeah, I'd have to say, you know, both of the vehicles a little bit messy on their runs, and uh, I'm not sure if this cold um, condition is a little different from how it was yesterday. The track is a lot cooler today. Yeah. Uh, so maybe grip level and stuff like that might be a little different. But uh, hopefully we can see uh, Imamaida back stronger for the next round. And congratulations to Saito moving on to the top 16. Exactly. Next up is going to be Yuji Saito in his S15, the VR Power S15, going against Koji Nagase. Nagase, a J2 driver coming up. Let's see how he's going to perform against the wild driver Saito. Saito coming in real hot into outer zone one here. Nagase's got to close that proximity. There he is dialing it in into outer zone one. Swinging back around here. Nagase trying to get there. Oh! And just making contact right there early on the outer zone three wall and Saito finishing strong, but man, yeah, I don't know. From this angle, it didn't look super hard, but it was, you know, clearly a hit. So hopefully he's yes. okay. I mean, luckily that he hit the tire patch and not the solid. Yeah, he was like super close to the uh, concrete wall. But yeah, look at looking at the replay right here. Uh, tires off at the outside zone one by uh, Saito. He does clear uh, the outside zone three where it looked like Nagase was on a good line chasing him. But uh, clearly he did not make it around there, uh, ended up into the tire barrier. Looks like he's driving away under his own power, which is okay. He seems like he's all right. And Saved you know, by the tire. It looked like there's no damage at all. Whew. That was close. Okay, I can't say at all, but there's no structural change to his rear yeah, end. Maybe, maybe the vinyl came off. That's damage. Exactly. So that's why I said <laughs> I, I took it back. Oh, there, there, you go, there. there you go. Oof. Oh, no, actually, it was actually the left rear quarter that he hit the tire barrier that was sticking out. Yes, and there you go. You could see how, yeah, not much at all. Very impressive right there. See, it's the Kazama yeah. Auto body kit that held on yeah, right there. Yeah, there you go. Then he drives back. Everybody's going to be like, Nagasa, are you okay? He'd be like, it's like what? He'd be like, that hit. He'd be like, what hit? Can't see nothing on the car. I did nothing. You can't see me. He's like, I did nothing Yeah, here. I did nothing. So Nagase this time around is going to be in the lead while Saito is going to be in the chase. Not the best feeling being in the situation that Nagase is in with that incomplete, but anything can happen. We've seen it all year round where we, you know, had high hopes that that lead driver starting out was looking good, just had to throw a solid chase run. But unfortunately, they would usually have a hiccup and spin out or whatever the case may be. So it looks like everything's good. Yeah, we're, they're like, there was a hit? Where? I don't see a hit. They got the tape Dude, ready to like, go nah. and nothing. So right there, uh, wearing the hat is Dai Chang. He is one of our crew guys and the guy closer to the back of the car. There you go, that's Dai Chang. And the guy right there with the shades, with the slick hair, that's Kuroda, Kuro Chang. He is our starter. He's been our starter for years, so he's like the Matt Sopa of FD Japan. Yep. You saw that he had the tape ready to go, and he's like, well, yeah, I he's guess like, I don't uh, need this. Yeah, all right. But yeah, so Nagase did move up from FDJ2 to the Pro Series here. Yeah, and you know, just going. I think he ended the year at third last year? 
I believe he podiumed a lot last year. Yeah. So let's see how he's going to do here on his lead run while Saito, like I said, Saito is a very aggressive driver. Let's see how he's going to do. Looks like he's giving Nagase a lot of room here to breathe. Coming around, approaching the outer zone one. Nagase, beautiful job through filling. It looks like he left real early through that outer zone one. Coming back around, Saito closing it in on him right here through the outer zone three. Taking a very shallow line behind in the chase position. But I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if that's going to be enough to uh, turn the tables for him. Yeah, Nagase uh, uh, did not make huge errors in as a lead run. But, you know, turning that uh, incomplete around is going to be very, very hard. Um, and looking at Saito, um, not a clean run. Doesn't He misses most of the outside zone three. The touch and go, he transitioned a little too early. It was a weird stall. It looked like he was about to straighten out at the transition after the outside zone three uh, to the inside clip. But, um, yeah, like uh, I said earlier, it's going to be very hard to take that because he is sitting on an incomplete, or Nakase is sitting on an incomplete. Yeah, very shallow C right there in outer zone three. Wow, I just noticed that there's three Saitos. We got Iko Saito, then we got Yuji Saito. Edgar going with Saito, Nishida going with Saito, and Imamura is going to go left. So Yuji Saito is going to get the win and move on to the top 16. Yeah, so we got uh, Iko Saito, then we got Yuji Saito, then we also have Daigo Saito. I'm trying to look to see if we have any more Saitos here. All right, so now we have the man who just won an event in the U.S., at the brand new track in Utah, it's Kenshiro Gushi uh, versus a young driver driving the IS350. Uh, Utah Komatsu chasing. This is going to be a Lexus battle. Lexus battle, and I got to say, let's see how Ken's going to do here. He doesn't get a whole lot of practice in this car, and this is definitely a different beast of a build than what he has in the States. And look at this, coming around through the touch and go. Nice job here, coming around in front of the judges, stand through outer zone three, and look at that, riding that wall, and Komatsu closing that proximity, taking a shallower line, but trying to sacrifice for an aggressive tandem battle. I don't know, it feels like it's been a little bit since we saw a tandem, and this went really well. Uh, looks like uh, Gushi is a tire dip there, a little bit of wavering. Uh, the line staying on the outside line fairly well and uh, kind of falling back a little bit mid-track by Komatsu, but towards the end, he catches right up. So I'd have to say a fairly good drive, uh, fairly good run by both of the drivers. Yeah, and you can see how Komatsu, uh, the second half, that outer zone three, yeah. he didn't get all the way out, but for some reason just lost. That's where he tried to gain the proximity. Yeah, so I would have to say the chase run cheated the line at outside zone three and also at the touch and go too, because he did the transition uh, at the same timing as the lead car, which makes it a little early for him. So he has to kind of stretch the car going to the outside zone three. Exactly. It's going to be interesting because uh, Komatsu yesterday out of nowhere threw some aggressive angle through the touch and go. So let's see how he's going to do on his lead this time and see if he's going to do the same run he did on qualify. Yeah, so I know for a fact that the uh, Lexus on the left, which is the RC, it's Coupe, this is actually a lot heavier than the IS that uh, Komatsu is driving. Uh, so that's going to be uh, interesting to see how they're going to handle each other now that they are switching places. All right, here they are. Yeah, Komatsu's IS, he built it a, a lot on his own. But here he is coming around the 3-2-1. Look at that. Early on, Ken, uh -huh. real aggressive. Gucci trying to catch himself and bring it back in right here early on through outer zone one. And here's where he has to really make up some room. And there he is right there, dialing it back into outer zone three. Uh -oh. oh, Komatsu oh, making a little oh, wavering connection right there, correction. But here he is ripping back around. And man, Gucci coming right through the clouds, popping up on his fender. So let's check out this replay here. All right, right there, it looks like Komatsu Oh, that's three tires out for the lead car. 
Here they are coming back around. There's like that slight bobble correction, but man, popping right back up. Man, look at the aggression early on from the start by Kangushi. Just holding on, staying in right there. Coming back around, somehow keeping that angle and still able to make up that proximity right there. Yeah, now we're going to have to check the replays because the lead car obviously... Uh... Ooh, right there, Ooh. real deep in now. There's a 1-4 Komatsu. Right there, diving right in on him. Popping right there through the smoke cloud. So here it yeah, is. so I just want to double check to see. Uh, it looks like he, it looks like the chase car went three off right before the rumble strip started. And the lead car went three tires off during the, or in the middle of the outside zone. But man, what a battle between these two Lexuses right here. And we'll see, we're gonna check out one more replay, I believe. Robbie's gonna analyze and make sure he's right, making the right call here. Yeah, so I think we're gonna have to, since um, I'm not gonna speak in behalf of the other judges too, but if both of the runs are incomplete, we're gonna have to go to the first run and decide, yeah, by watching this. You can see right there, nice job by Gushi coming around, filling that outer zone very well. Komatsu finding himself in a little bit of a pinch right there after outer zone three, having a very shallow line. So we'll see here. I for sure know that Alexis is gonna be moving on, but which one is it gonna be the coupe or the sedan? And while we're waiting for you fans out there, what is your, what's your take on this? What should, which one do you like more? Which one do you feel should move on? We usually get a lot of y'all out there giving the close to the right answer, so let's see. Getting one more replay. Oh, you saw right there. It looks like yeah, Gucci was right on the line. Yeah, Gucci was actually on the line. So this makes this makes the decision a lot. Thank this you to the make, drone yeah. team right there, know, right saving there. the like, day, yeah, making it a lot easier for these judges. Yeah, so it looks like um, the chase car earlier um, his front left tire. There you go, was Edgar the... going with Ken Gushi Nishida. So there you go. Ken Gushi gets the win and moves on to the top 16. Congratulations to Gushi. And uh, man, uh, Komatsu, if he didn't go off tire um, at outside zone one, that was actually a pretty nice uh, lead yeah, I, run. I could have definitely seen a one more time battle between the two. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. Man, and it came down to being on the line or getting off the track one tire. Look at this. So let's just double check to see. The front left tire of Gucci is right on the line, so. There you go, makes it easy for the judges right there. Thank you, drone team. Exactly. Thank you, technology. <laughs> there you are, but looks like we will now be moving on to our next battle right here it's going to be a jzx 100 battle going against kanta and shigahisa sasayama sasayama coming back strong he's the one that suffered very bad damage going straight into the outer zone three wall last year let's see how he's going to do in the chase position kanta has been doing a phenomenal job all year round here he is in the lead coming around Whoa. through that three two one sasayama Whoa. diving in real hard right there on his right rear of kanta swinging around kanta just riding that line here through the touch and go looks like sasayama's giving a little room but diving in again in this outer zone three nice job there 
Oh, and just letting out a little bit, making a correction, leaving that outer zone three. Man, Kanta did a phenomenal job on his run for the lead position. Man, Kanta was great on the lead, but man, I'd have to say, look at this uh, aggressive chase. Aggressive chase by Sasayama. Kanta did a great lead run, uh, but at the same time, not clean, but very exciting chase by Sasayama. He's kind of all over the place, but I'd have to say it was uh, really exciting to watch. I'm not going to say it was good, but uh, very exciting to see. Look at this. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Early on Kanta. right there. Two tires off by uh, Sasayama. Had to uh, cut a little short on the outside zone one. Uh, but Kanta as a lead run. Man. Close enough on the wall. Uh, he, he does just enough. Uh, for everything, so good job by the lead run, and you know what? I like the way uh, Sasayama's being aggressive, even though, you know, I'm pretty sure he was traumatized when he went to the wall uh, last year because he rode off a car there. Exactly. Uh, and being back here and being aggressive, uh, hands down to him. Man, what's wild though is that drone footage right there. You could see the difficulty in visibility in that chase position. So you're pretty much coming in blind. And the scariest part is through the touch and go coming to that outer zone three. You don't want to be too blind yeah, there. Yeah, like, like earlier, I mean, this is what it is too. It's like earlier we, you know, we almost said, or we almost thought it was three tires off for the chase car. And that's what it looks like from some of the views. And that's, I mean, we, we suck. <laughs> no, your eyes are only so well, but that's why we have all these camera views. And next up, they're switching the tables here. Sasayama's in the lead. Kanta's in the chase. Kanta is a very, very aggressive driver. And here he is. Let's see how much trust he has in Sasayama coming around outer zone one. Sasayama taking a shallower line through that outer zone one. Let's see how it is. But look at that. Kanta, not base, coming around outer zone three what? here. Look at that right there. That proximity Woo! through Kanta. Killing it in that chase position right there. And right there, hugging him in the inside clip. Oh my God, that's uh, pretty amazing. That was a very beautiful chase by Kanta. And I'd have to say, you know, Sasayama doing a good job in the lead too. Uh, that counts. Uh, but hands down to Kanta's chase. He was a little smaller, uh, shallower line at the outside zone but one. But look at this, chasing him through the outside zone three not giving him any room. Beautiful way to execute the transition. Man, look at this. He doesn't get any further from here. <laughs> he doesn't. He just quits in closer and, and closer. closer and closer. Wow, nice job. And look at that. He mimics his line, fills the zones in that chase position, doesn't compensate too much. So good job right here. Egret's going to go left with Kanta. Robbie Nishida left, and Yoichi Imamura is going to go left. So Kanta is going to get the win and move on to the top 16. Great job by Kanta, but I would have to say great job by Sasayama. Um, hopefully he's back for Fuji. Um, and, I mean, he I think he put up a very good fight against uh, Kanta. Looks like the next battle is ready and lined up. Here they are. You have Yoshichika Tamagawa in the beautiful Supra going against Konai Sobagini in his beautifully built brand new GR86. Let's see how Tamagawa is gonna do here in the lead. And here he is coming real aggressive out of the jump, coming into outer zone one. Sobagini has to keep that close proximity through that chase, coming through that touch and go. Oh, he's diving in a little small. Right there by Tamagawa, not the greatest lead line that you want through that outer zone three, but Sobagini able to adjust himself to mimic what Tamagawa threw down in that outer zone three. Let's go ahead and check out this replay. Everybody's favorite JZA 80 Supra driven by Tamagawa. Nice job here on the outside zone one. Sobagini trying to keep the close proximity and the pressure on, but right here, after the outside zone two, it looked like Tamagawa had to readjust his line because he wasn't too close to the wall in the outside zone three and cuts in a lot at the inside clip. We've got to keep that in mind. But also, Sobakiri, after the transition, uh, after he comes through the touch and go, after here, he starts to dive in a little bit too much. A smaller line, a shallower line, uh, kind of a shallower line by both cars. Look at that. Yeah, through that outer zone three. Yeah, so I'd have to say, you know, the lead car should have done a little bit better on the later half of the track. And uh, Sobagidi as well. 
Um, I'm pretty sure he was trying everything he can to keep up and also try to um, stay on the same line and angle as the lead car. Just because I think of like the most useless information, I think the Supra is the one of two cars that have the actual engine that came factory in it. Befi besides Fuji Naka, I believe, has the three rotor. But here they are switching it up. Sobagiri is going to be in the lead. I believe two events ago is when he debuted this car. He was in the R31 last year and early on this season. Coming out, debuting this beautifully built car. Did he get... Do you see how much he has in his front end? It looks like he went off roading or something. Oh, it was probably the dirt in the grass when they went through the inside clip, the purge. I thought it was like a lot of uh, bugs or yeah, something. There was, was a like, lot man. of like uh, flies and bugs out in the back over there in the nature area. So I got kind of scared for me. Yes, because we're out, we're up in the mountains and out in the middle of nowhere. There you go. You can see him cleaning it off for him. Oh, there you go. Bringing out the broom, the infamous witch broom. Oh, they're going to scratch the paint. It's probably a wrap, most likely. Here they are, ready to go. So Sobagiri's got to really focus and get to those zones. Tamagawa struggled in that outer zone three. So we'll see here how he's going to adjust himself and see what his spotter kind of gave him a heads up on. Man. All right, here they are, coming through the chicane now. Sobagiri. Let's see a good lead run here. Tamagawa right here gonna dial it in. He's closing that proximity early on. Look at that, throwing a little bit more angle in that chase position. So Bagini adjusting himself, entering an outer zone one. It looks like Tamagawa is keeping kind of a fair, safe proximity. And there you go, taking that shorter line, shallower line right there through outer zone three. Uh oh. But didn't keep that proximity throughout. Um. This might be coming down to the lead runs, and I'd have to say there's a little bit of a wavering there by Sobagiri. Um, he tried to readjust his car by left foot braking, getting onto the outside zone, outside zone, and does uh, fill the zone towards the end, does a good job in the mid section, and also the outside zone three looks like he's a little bit more on the outside line than uh, Tamagawa's lead run. Now, Tamagawa being behind, he doesn't get too close um, to Sobagiri, runs a smaller line, a shallower line through outside zone one, leaves the touch and go way too early. And there you go, see how deep uh, Sobagiri is on the... Compared to, yeah, Tamagawa. Yeah, compared to, the if we go lead to lead, chase to chase, I think one of the drivers did a little bit better than uh, the opponent on both yes, uh, agreed. runs. Yes, So we'll see what the final call is for these two. Is it going to be Tamagawa or Sobagiri? And Eggert's going to go with go right to Sobagiri. Nishida going right. And looks like Kodai Sobagiri is going to get the win and move on to the top 16. Congratulations to Sobagiri, the young gun, making it into the top 16. And that's it for this weekend. Tamagawa, I love the way he approached outside zone one. But uh, if he would have been able to, you know, do a little bit better on the midsection in the last section of the um, track. This might have been a little different call. So next up at the line ready to go is going to be Kazumi Takahashi going against Daichi Mizutani. Takahashi, this is going to be an interesting lead run. And, you know, Mizutani's got to adjust himself to it because Takahashi's been very aggressive through this touch and go and has been doing some hard flicks through that zone. Yeah, and I have to say, man, this car is very, uh, I like his BMW. It looks really good. Yes, he's VR powered now. Last year he was GR powered. Here he is coming around to outer zone one. Right on the line there. Here he is right there, that flick oh. coming back around to outer zone two. Nice job ripping back around. And there he is carrying it out through outer zone three. Looks like he was a little shallower than he's used to. But Mizutani looks like he's struggling just a little bit to keep that close proximity. Yeah, so this uh, driver, Takahashi, is always exciting to watch. Um, and this time he looked like he had a few adjustments, 
hiccups here and there, but does a good job in outside zone one. Nice job at the touch and go. Fills the outside zone two. Doesn't go so too close to the outside zone three area, but overall, Mizutani is pretty much on the similar line, just not much proximity. Yeah. And you can see Mizutani tried. It's just a matter of he was doing, you know, the right thing of following his angle and everything, but yeah. unfortunately just not able to close that proximity gap. Yeah, so now it really depends on how Mizutani is going to lead and obviously how Takashi is going to give chase. Dude, I just said something like, the sky is blue. Like the obvious. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're learning from me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rubbing off on you. And here you go. I want to see this area, how deep ta yeah, yeah, see, Takashi so, wasn't so, so deep. deep yeah. yeah. I don't think we've ever had that camera angle last year. Oh, yeah, where the wall yeah, is? The wall is, The yeah. proximity, yeah. Yeah, good job. Good job by the production team. I mean. And I believe he's on that high-rise um, lift that we have over there outside of the finish line. I believe he's catching No, the no, view. no, I think the, the, the outside, oh, is it? Yes. It can't be, oh, that's an angle. All right, let's see this angle from these two here. Takahashi is gonna be in the chase, Mizutani in the lead, Mizutani coming through this 3-2-1, very aggressive. Looks like Takahashi's giving him a little bit right now. Is he gonna make it up here through the touch and go? Here it is, that hard flick by him. Very nice mimic of Mizutani right there coming around. Looks like both cars were kind of shallow through that outer zone three. But there you go, Takahashi making up for it right there to the finish. Now, was there a big difference between these two cars? I don't know. I'm going to have to go ahead and check the replay. Tire off for Mizutani. But not of uh, Takahashi getting closer and closer towards the end. I think he gave him a little bit too much room. Um, as the chase car. And Mizutani doesn't go all the way out to the touch and go. I think he dipped the tire at the outside zone two. He dipped the tire at the outside zone one as well. Um, and it looks like Takashi gets a little bit closer. And here's that view right there. See how he dipped a tire in the lead. Coming around, dipped another tire right there. And there you go, the proximity, or not proximity, the the distance they had right there definitely was about the same as when Takahashi is in the lead position for outer zone three. All right, so this is going to be a hard one because it was close. Edgar going left for Takahashi. Robbie Nishida wants it one more time. Looks like we are going to see yeah. our first one more time hey, battle. I'd have to say, I know why Eggert went with Takahashi. Um, and if I really, 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 really had to pick one guy, and uh, if we went, uh, really, how can I say it? If I had to look at like microscopic stuff, I think Takahashi might have took that one. But um, since we do have the choice of one more time, I'm going with the one more time. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm, they I'm had, not going to lie to you. Like, they both had their same kind yeah, of the fair both mistakes. Not that, they were both okay. You know, and we want to see good. Yeah, nothing to find into. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to move on to okay, our okay. next <laughs> battle. We'll see them battle it out again. Yukio Fausto, fan favorite, coming out here in the lead position, going against Junya Ishikawa. And here they are coming around. Ishikawa in a new car debuting this year. Here he is ripping around in the chase position. Whoa, Look at that. Nice job, nice job by, by Fausto filling that zone beautifully. Coming around the touch and go. Nice job. Look at that. Ishikawa taking a shallower line. Not able to get all the way out to outer zone two in that chase position. What? But closing that proximity to Fausto. But Fausto doing uh -oh, a nice uh -oh. job through the finish. Looks like he was really uh, tight in that inside clip. But overall, Fausto did a nice job in that lead. Yeah, we're just double checking. Everything was great other than the initiation by Fausto. That was kind of messy. But right here. Ooh. 
Oh, Ishikawa, is that for Ishikawa? I mean, that yeah. was multiple tires off. I don't think that was three. But Ishikawa tries to keep, you know, keep himself on the same line as Fausto. Dives in a little bit outside zone two. And right here gets super close in attacks, but gets a little too close and ends up being in the dirt at the inside clip. Now let's go ahead and check this out. Fausto not going all the way to angle at initiation. But Ishikawa keeping his car and vehicle. Oh, and Fausto not making it all the way to the outside zone three wall either. And then right here, it's a lot of tires off on, on the inside clip. But I'd have to say, I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I can't even tell if that was two or three because of the camera angle. Yeah. Looks like they're cleaning up. And, and you know what? Like, and, uh, I mean, my confession, you know, it's like us judges, we can only judge what we see. So um, everybody, you know, you can be watching from a different angle. You can have a different camera angle. But we have to go with what we have. And it's not about, you know, um, what happened. It's supposed to be what is seen. It's just like, you know, as seen on TV, pretty much, you know? I mean, the nice, and, the biggest thing is, is there's three sets of eyes seeing this. Yeah. And, and making the call and for And we this. go from experience. Um, you know, we, we go from the facts that we know, uh, what happened previously at a track and how it went down. And we have that and we take all that in consideration and what we see on the screen and make the decision. So it's not like we just kind of throw everything in the air and see what hits, you know, the ground first or something. So, uh and you can see right there, there from the drone footage, Ishikawa, they're kind of squaring his car away because the crew out here picked up his parts of his rear bumper that got yeah, left flew behind. Off, I think. Um... <laughs> so we'll see here. No, oh, whoa, whoa. It got knocked down. No. Strong wind. I felt like I, I got drunk for a second or something. Or punched, I, should, I guess. It's yeah. a better... So it looks like they're, uh... oh, the oh. support rods for his Yeah, and it's rear probably bumper. bolted on, so they can't just tear it off. Exactly, so they're so taping they're it up so it doesn't fling around, and especially since he's going to be in the lead hey, this time. I like time. that. Look at on the trunk. Inside the trunk, it says Hiroshima Toyota, and underneath it, it says, did you close the hood? <laughs> Very. <laughs> Reminding each other. Make sure you pin the hood down. Yeah. Because I think it was this track that we saw Saito's hood pop up. Was it yeah. here or was it uh, Ebisu? I think it was Ebisu. Okay. Um, I mean, but I mean, we've seen that happen a few times. I mean, it happened yeah. to me before, too. Man, I was so pissed at the crew. <laughs> I was super mad. I was like, what? It was at Long Beach. I was like, what the? It's like, what? It's just your luck. It looks like they're wrapping it up, finished. So Ishikawa this time is going to be in the lead while Yukio Fausto is going to be in the chase. Yeah, so Ishikawa, brand new car. He already tore off the rear bumper from his uh, brand new car that they yep. debuted uh, this year. And he's still rocking the GR under the hood, so pretty strong with that. His teammate oh, also hey, hey, in the so, top yeah. 32. So, so this is really, really like uh, Ken Gushi's oh, yeah. car is very similar. Uh, those These cars are very similar with the similar power plant, uh, the brand new GR86 uh, chassis. And, you know, as all of the GR86s uh, that I've seen in FDJ, they all look really comfortable and the car looks really amazing. They look like they can. Oh, yeah. After round really well. one. Hey. I think um, I just I just saw Brian's daughter waving. <laughs> I'm on Brian's screen, but yeah, thank you very much for uh, joining us from all the way from the USA, the East Coast. Brian Eggert, our guest judge for this round. Looks like we're ready to get this second half of this battle on. And here we go through the chicane. Ishikawa in the lead. Fausto in the chase. Here they are both coming in through that 3-2-1. Fausto dialing it in early. Oh, but looks like he's losing a little bit through that outer zone one, trying to catch some kind of grip to get closer in proximity to Ishikawa. Ishikawa kind of doing his thing, riding around. Fausto definitely a lot deeper there in outer zone three. 
but unable to close that proximity gap that Ishikawa created early on in outer zone one. Hmm. Now, two very different drivers, I would have to say. And uh, um, I would have to say, you know, there was a huge amount of uh, separation there from the chase car. And also, Ishikawa not throwing as much angle and doesn't get too, doesn't get super close on the outside line. But at the same time, there was a number of mistakes that Fausto had as the lead car. Yeah, he definitely struggled trying to close that proximity. The nice Ooh, actually, job. You know Ishikawa what, yeah. did a beautiful job in Otter Zone 3. They're definitely feeling it a lot more than when Fausto was in the lead. And I think um, I think the big part of it where the lead run or the lead driver, um, a lot of angle, looks like a good job. It looks like he did a great job on his lead run too, but... So we'll see here what the judges have. Let's get this drone view. Yeah, I think the proximity, number one, is just too much. And number two, as the lead run, Ishikawa wasn't the perfect run. And uh, it looks like he was trying to run away, too, uh, the way he handled the outside zone. There you go. Going right. So it looks like the judges are going to go right with Junya Ishikawa from Hiroshima and Toyota. Team Droopy taking the win, moving on to the top 16. Yeah, it looks like Ishikawa was trying to run away a little bit um, versus, you know, trying to kick angle and everything. But at the same time, um, uh, Fausto's lead run, the mistake at the initiation, not getting too close at outside zone three. Um, didn't help him out at all. You know, if he had like a super perfect tight line as a lead run and a good initiation, that probably would have been one more time or maybe even uh, Fausto taking the win. But this time Ishikawa is uh, taking the win. And we'll be so, right back. Yeah, We're we'll going to go right to commercials back. real quick and uh, we'll check you all out. Come, come, go take a break, get a drink, <laughs> go to the bathroom. We'll be back. Formula Drift Japan. Ultimate lubricant. Mort 
Atlantis. Made in Japan. Breed. 伝統と革新。小倉クラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。小倉レッシングクラッチ。ORC。究極の静かさと安全性。オンロード。オフロード。世界中で活躍する。ケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔能性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダWelcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed those sponsored commercials right there. We are back here at Okayama International Circuit for the 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Japan Series. Really cold. His mic's not on. It's really cold. <laughs> but no, it was a much needed break, but we're going to be rolling into the one more time battle between Takahashi and Mizutani. And that's the last battle we're going to see for the left side of the bracket. And we'll be moving on to the right side. And there they, there they are right there, lined up, ready to go. Takahashi in the green E9, or yeah, E92 uh, BMW going against the Wild S15 driven by Mizutani.
Here we go. So it was very close call um, at the earlier battle. Now it's the one more time battle by these two drivers. Man, look at that. Takahashi early on just Whoa. taking a hard. Oh! oh no. Mizutani losing it right there through outer zone one in the chase position. Not much to make up there. Dipping three tires, being in the gravel pit, but luckily he did not get sucked in through outer zone one. And man, Takahashi just doing his thing and making a statement why he wants to move on to the top 16. But we will see here after he does his chase run while Mizutani is going to be in the lead. Yeah, so not much to compare here because uh, Takahashi right on the line on the outside zone. I like that. A lot of uh, angle at the touch and go. Uh, fills the outside zone two fairly good. Outside zone three um, probably could have been a little closer. But uh, overall, as a lead run, I mean, uh, good enough angle. I really like how he throws a lot of angle. And going back to uh, the chase car here, Mizutani, three tires off at the outside zone one. There you go. A little bit more uh, left a little room at the uh, wall at the outside zone three. But Mizutani going off three tires is going to give him an incomplete as a chase car. You see them coming around now. Ready to switch their roles. Takahashi is going to be in the chase this time while Mizutani is going to be in the lead. So we'll see here. Like I said, this is our last battle on the left side. This is our first one more time battle here in the top 32. That BMW is very beautiful. He went from a GR. It was GR powered. Now it's VR powered. So we'll see how he's going to do this time around in the chase while Mizutani's got to do as much as he can to get the closest 100 point lead run. Yeah, and I think they're both on silent tires. So it's a silent tire battle. Who's going to take this one? Exactly. It's going to come down to the setup of the car yeah, and the right driver now, itself. Right now Mizutani's not looking good because of his incomplete, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be doing everything he can as a lead car. And here they are, it looks like Takahashi's closing this proximity gap that he got left behind in his first battle against them. Both dipping two tires right there. Takahashi's got to definitely close it here, coming into this outer zone three. And there you go, Mizutani being very shallow while Takahashi followed his line through outer zone three. And right now it's not looking very promising for Mizutani. Yeah, so was that enough to turn the incomplete around by Mizutani? I don't think so. Takahashi, two tires off at the outside zone, one, but also two tires off by the lead car, Mizutani. And I would have to say line-wise, very similar as Takahashi's lead. But, you know, turning around an uh, incomplete is really, really nearly impossible unless somebody else incompletes. So this might be the obvious call. Yeah, by it might be an easy vehicles. call for these judges. Eggert's going to go left for Takahashi. Robbie is going to go left. And Yoichi Mamura is going to go left. So Kazumi Takahashi is going to get the win and move on to the top 16, filling that last slot. Congratulations to Takahashi. Now we have a grade eight, I'm sorry, top 16. Um, half of the top 16 done on the left side. And we know who's gonna be moving on to the top 16, but great job um, taking Takahashi into it one more time and uh, getting really close uh, by Mizutani. Hopefully he's, uh, we see him again in uh, Fuji. It looks like we're ready, squared up for our next battle. First battle on the right side is gonna be Koichi Yamashita who got second in qualify going against Kazuhiro Kubo. Yeah, but you have to understand, you know, he tied 91 point uh, as he tied with the number one qualifier and exactly. qualifies, so he knows what he's doing when he's leading. Yes, here he is coming around outer zone one, manipulating his car to make sure he's right spot in the right zone. Looks like he's dipping two tire tires. Kubo, though, very shallow, straightening up right there, coming into that touch and go. Ooh, oh. definitely a huge struggle for Kubo, trying to keep his car in drift. And not sure if he, they did a change up on the setup or what, but he was he's just he was struggling to just keep the car drifting. Yeah, it was a major mistake made by the chase driver Kubo. 
And right here, I'm not going to say Yamasa was very smooth and he was two tires off at the outside zone. Um, but after that here, it looks like he does a great job on the outside zone three by the wall. And uh, Kubo as a chase driver, a uh, huge mistake going from outside zone two to three. Uh, this is going to hurt him um, in this battle. Let's go ahead and check out the drone view. Yamashita, a little bit too wide on the outside zone one, but he brings his car back to where it's supposed to be at and getting right on the edge of the wall, rode the wall at the outside zone three. So good job. You know it's the number two qualifier. You know I noticed so that's awesome because we were gonna I was gonna talk about the body kit some more the wide body kit but it's funny because it, the behind the the rear tires there's a cutout a slit and it's just a trail of smoke that just pumps out there. Yeah, it's, so it's a pretty it's, cool feature that it has. Yeah, this uh, body kit is pretty much designed for drift cars, so uh, that's pretty cool. Now, um, yeah, you should get one, Kenny, for your JZX. Um, no monies. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Kubo is going to be leading this time, and Yamashita is going to give chase. So here they are. Kubo definitely has to make up because he took shallower line, could keep it in driftlet, but let's see how he's going to do. But Yamashita at the same time, not sure what his spotter gave him a heads up on with Kubo not able to keep his car in drift. Is Yamashita going to be aggressive? And it looks like early on oh. he's right there, but Yamashita struggled right there to get into initiation through that 3-2-1 and be in drift. We definitely got to check out that replay. Here he is coming back around. Nice job through the second half here in the battle. Coming back around and look at that hard flick by Yamasha in the chase. But we're going to have to see if Yamasha was in drift after that 3-2-1 area. And it looks like shortly after that one cone, he had a huge correction. Wow, so that was a huge, huge mistake by Yamashita as the chase car. Now we're going to have to, ooh. Now we're going to have to uh, look at the lead runs by both drivers. Looks very similar because uh, Kubo, two tires off. Touch and go, outside zone two. Could have been a little deeper there in outer zone three. All right, so we're gonna have to probably go um, look at this as the lead to lead and who did a better job on the lead position. And uh, yeah, Kubo making a huge mistake at the outside zone two to three area and also Yamashita making a major mistake on the uh, initiation area. Here you go, checking out. Yeah, that's very uh, rare to see Yamashita making that huge a mistake early on. Yeah, so we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, check out the replay again. Uh, maybe next time, or th this time with Yamashita leading. Here you go, let's go ahead and check out this replay one more time. Both cars in their lead positions dip tires there. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to say the difference is, the biggest difference is good amount of angle at the inside clip by uh, Yamashita and also outside line. Um, at the outside zone three where the wall is, which is one of the harder areas as well. I'd have to say everything else um, other than that is uh, very even. Uh, but now now when it comes down to who was the better lead, I might have just gave it away right now, but uh, we'll go ahead and see what the other judges also have to say. So Eggert's going to go left to Yamashita. Nishida going left and Imamura going left. So Koichi Yamashita, the champ himself, is going to be moving on to the top 16. And uh, not, not a good way to move on, I guess, and probably not a good way to win for Yamashita. But it, a win is a win, and, you know, that's how important it is to do a good lead run. Um, where if it comes down to comparison, we're going we're gonna to have to watch it. We're going to have to dissect it really well. Um, in order to, you know, see who moves on. 
Exactly. Next battle up, already ready to go. They're already going through the chicane. It's going to be Monkey Ito going against Ryutaro Oe. Oe moving up from the J2 series. Here he is coming in in the chase position. This time, let's see how he's going to do here against Ito. Ito, nice job through outer zone one. Coming around through that touch and go. Looks like Ito might have hit the tire through outer zone one. And there he is right there. Oe trying to keep that close proximity. Nice job through that outer zone three. Could have been a lot deeper, but man, the proximity was on point. Yeah, so this is the obvious where Oe kind of gave up the line to get closer um, after the touch and go. And uh, right here, Ito doesn't fill the outside zone one from the beginning, kind of starts to get into it mid and dips a tire. Oe, a little shallow at the touch and go. His line is a lot smaller from outside zone two to three, but he chose proximity. And uh, Ito, uh, as a lead driver, after the outside zone one, everything else looks uh, fairly good uh, as a lead. So now we're gonna have to see what happens. See, as you see uh, the camera angle difference, you have to make sure that you have that in mind where the outside zone one, Ito looked like he did a good job, but he totally, he missed half of it. Yeah. Because of the way they dive in, they kind of dive in, go straight in. Um, and that's not how we want the drivers to drive this track as a lead car. You have to drive it so that you're kicking a lot of angle and drifting as deep as possible, filling the outside zone from the beginning. Exactly, that's a big thing. A lot of these drivers are missing is that beginning half of outer zone one. But at the same time, you can see in the chase position, Oe totally missed outer zone two, mm -hmm. compensated for that close proximity. We'll see if that's gonna really affect him and see what Ito's gonna do in his chase. Yeah, I think uh, what happened is when you are thinking that the lead car is going to go wide and they go straight in, you want to chase them. Then they come, kind of come out, they go straight in mid line, come out wide, then that kind of slows down uh, the chase car. Then the chase car has to actually deal with it. And when you have nowhere to go, you're going to start to lose uh, line. Uh, you're going to have a smaller line. So let's see what's going to happen when they switch places now. So here they are, always in the lead. Let's see how he's going to do. Coming around through the three, two, one to outer zone one. The approach here, once again, only, oh, short change in all of outer zone one by Oe, being oh. real shallow. Ito just holding on right there, almost getting lost in that smoke through outer zone three by Oe. But yeah, not the cleanest run we've seen from Oe. All right, so I would have to say uh, chase to chase. We have proximity versus Ito actually doesn't even have that much proximity anymore after the, oh, that's almost three tires off. But yeah, the chase uh, made by Ito was uh, pretty bad, I would have to say. And um, now I'm gonna compare, if we compared both of the lead runs where the outside zone one wasn't too good by both cars, everything else after that as a lead run, it looks like Oe looks like he's a little bit deeper on the outside zones. And as the chase run, Oe's mistake was running a smaller line, but Ito as a chase car, he was kind of all over the place on line and also no proximity. Yeah, there you go. That's And he wasn't even switched back for the outside zone too. <laughs> So we'll see here what the judges have for the final call. Is it going to be Oe or Ito? Here we are. Egger going with the one more time. Nishida going with Oe and Imamura going with Oe. So Ryutaro Oe gets the win and will be moving on to the top 16. Yeah, I think Brian went with the one more time because, yes, um, uh, the leads were very similar, and uh, like we were saying, you know, the outside zone one, there was a big mistake, and I think me and Imamura went with the OA because the chase, we thought that Ito's mistakes were a little bit more severe, I guess, um, and at least uh, OA was close, but um, I honestly think, yeah, that could have been also one more time too, so uh, that was a really close call, and it was a hard call for us uh, to make, but this time OA is going to move on.
So here you go. Two familiar faces right here. We have Masanori Kohashi in the lead while we have Naoto Suenaga in the chase. These two have probably done a lot of practice runs with one another, both coming from Fukushima. Here they are coming around. Team Orange battle. Right here, here they are coming around outer zone one. Nice job. Kohashi dipping a tire looks like, but man, look at that, Suenaga. Oh, just missing outer zone two, throwing him offline here through outer zone three, but able to hold Ooh. on and keep that close proximity right there, <laughs> making it very exciting in that chase position. Yeah. But you know what? I like Kohashi's uh, outside zone one, and I like the way he approaches outside zone three, but it looks like he gets a little too, uh, he stalls a little bit too much on the outside zone three, and that's where uh, Suenaga got to catch him right here. Watch this. And he was like, there you are. Obviously, he's on a smaller line yeah. and very shallower line, but I like the way he got really close. Look at, uh, very nice. I want to say like three-fourths of this track, Kohashi was only three wheels on. <laughs> and I say on the ground because he was like yeah, his front was, like, end was. Lifting. Yeah. There's, there's going to be some good shots of this run right here. Look at that. Coming around. There you go. Look at right, his so front. We're just watching a Team Orange show right now um, here at Okayama. But uh, I would have to say that, you know, uh, Kohashi is filling the zones and doing what he's supposed to do as a lead, lead driver. And he did have a few, uh, like, like I said, you know, a slight stall at the outside zone three area. There you uh, go. That didn't really affect the chase car. And Suenaga had proximity um, after the touch and go. The Team Fukushima girls right there. Team Fukushima girls, do you guys want to see more drifting or you guys want to see more of the Umbrella girls? And I don't even know why I asked that. I, that's probably the obvious answer. <laughs> I want to see drift. Girls, girls, girls. But there's some girls watching too, you know, and they probably want to see drifting too. All right, so there you go, Suenaga. He's the older driver in the Team Orange. So I'm pretty sure he wants to take out, take down the younger uh, driver, Kohashi. But let's see what Suenaga is going to do as a lead driver. Yeah, and Sune Suenaga's got a lot built up because he missed out last time because they were unable to get his car squared away moving into the top 16. And look at this. Here he is coming around, filling out of zone two right there. Kohashi trying to keep that close proximity. Man, this is going to be a tough one right here. Nice proximity by Kohashi in the chase position. And Suenaga Man. doing his thing in the lead. Man, that was, uh, that was a good battle uh, by these two drivers. I do, I think I know which driver is going to be moving on. But very nice lead by Suenaga. Kohashi right now sitting second overall in points, got 260. He's only 19 points away from Matsuyama. So there you go. Let's see who's going to get this win and who's going to move on. Because at hey. the same time, Suenaga's sitting at six. He's got 190, took a really big hit last round, not being able to compete. Yeah, so Kohashi uh, did a great job as a chase driver. Uh, but, you know, obviously to do a good run behind a, behind a driver, it has to be behind a good lead. And Eggert's going left. Nishida's going left. So there you go. Masanori Kohashi gets the win, moves on to the top 16, and, you know, he's fighting for these points. Hey, and I'd have to say if it was lead to lead, Suenaga did slightly better than Kohashi, but chase to chase, Suenaga's mistakes were a lot bigger than Kohashi's. Agreed. So man, yeah, uh, I want to see it one more time. <laughs> but yeah, the, both the chases knocked themselves out. And there you go, the final replay. Before we move on right here to our next battle, which is going to be against number 61, Mao Yamanaka going against number 7, Junji Yamamoto. All right, so we got the Formula Drift Japan FTJ2 champ from last year, Mao Yamanaka leading in this black vehicle. With good ride and uh, this bright orange. 2J-powered FD. FD. And look at that right there. Oh, coming right there. A little bit of contact. It looked like by Yamamoto. But look at that right there. 
Yamanaka doing his thing. Wow, Yamanaka's lead is pretty good. It's really good right there, but man, unfortunately Yamamoto early on kind of threw himself out in that chase position. Let's see this proximity early on and how, see how close and see if there really was contact. Oh, yeah. yep, you can see the disruption. It looked like to the his front, front bumper. washed out. And as he was washing out, it hit the, the rear of uh, Yamanaka. So Mao doing his thing, beautiful job. Yeah, Yamanaka right here, he podiumed multiple times last year in the J2 series, so I'm definitely, he's probably has an itch right now to be on that podium. So we'll see how he does. That was a very beautiful lead run by him. Let's see how he's gonna do in the chase. Yeah, so um, as a lead run, Yamanaka did a good job. And uh, that contact in the washout, that's going to give him an incomplete as the chase car uh, by Yamamoto. So let's see. Yeah, so under the FD, it's not rotary. He's got a 2J under the hood. We'll see how he's going to go against Mao Yamanaka's car. Also got a 2J under that hood. Looks like his bumper held up. They're pulling up to the line now. Not sure what's going on with Mao Yamanaka. Looks like he's... No, he probably wanted the rear checked uh, to make sure because there was contact. And there's Jaijan there checking the car out and is giving them the thumbs up, which means they're gonna be doing the second half of this battle. Exactly. And just for you, you guys viewing out there, we are viewing the chat, checking it out, trying to answer some of the questions that get brought up. Trying to be interactive with y'all. Y'all are our fan base out here. We're not on the PA system today. We were on the PA system for FDJ2, but now we 100% focus on y'all viewers out there online. And look at this right here, the second part of the battle. Yamamoto in the lead, Yamanaka in the chase. Yamanaka's got to keep it very aggressive here, even though Yamamoto kind of knocked himself in his chase position. There you go, Yamamoto, beautiful job filling that outer zone one. Coming around, looks like he might have been a little late through outer zone one, but here he is coming around, little disturbed there through that outer zone three, one, unable to get all the way out to the outer portion, portion of that zone. But nice strong finish through that inside clip. So um, once again, you know, there's an incomplete by Yamamoto as a chase driver. I'd have to say Yamamoto's lead run, uh, very good job. Right on the line on the outside zone one. Would like to see a little bit more angle at the touch and go, but uh, fills the zone at outside zone two. I don't think he was too close to the wall on the outside zone three and finishes off the track. And I'd have to say not Really any mistakes made by Yamanaka chasing, not super close, but not too far either, keeping his uh, distance from the lead car and finishing off the run. Here's the drone footage. Here we go, Eggert going left with Yamanaka. Nishida going left, so Mao Yamanaka is gonna get the win and move on to the top 16. Tough luck for Yamamoto getting knocked out here at top 32. Hopefully he's back stronger for the next Fuji event, which is gonna be our final. So uh, we are almost done with the season pretty much. And yeah. uh, speaking about, you know, season being done, next weekend is uh, gonna be your window. Exactly, and Robbie will be there, so go say what's up to him. Yeah, high five. High five. And the next, next battle. Is a GR86 battle. It's gonna be Hokuto Matsuyama, our points leader right now, going against Yusuke Kusaba. So it's the TMAR going against the Cusco Racing Team. We'll see how it goes. Both 2J powered. Beautifully built GR86s. 
Both same kit on them. Look at that. Very aggressive look by both cars. And here they are coming around. Whoa. Outer zone one. And look at that mimic by one another through outer zone what? one there. Beautiful job filling that, that zone early on. Swinging it back around. There you go, Kasava diving in on him right there through outer zone three. Able to hold on, save himself through that wall, coming back around. But man, Matsuyama doing his thing, what he does best, and why he's on the top right now in points. Yeah, um, I'm not going to say... That was a really good run by both drivers, obviously. But uh, I would like to see a little bit more angle by Matsuyama uh, throughout, like right here outside zone one. It looks like, you know, it's... It's human nature where when you're in the lead, you kind of want to run away uh, when a car is hunting you down. And it looks like uh, Kusaba is trying to give him everything he's got uh, to chase him down. Let's go ahead and check this out from the drone view. Nice job by both drivers at the initiation. Great job uh, getting all the way to the outside zone. Uh, kind of late to the outside zone one, but uh, gets out there good enough. And right here, a little bit of a cross of the line uh, by Kusaba as a chase car, um, but trying to keep the proximity. Um, but it looks like he could not get all the way up to his uh, rear quarter or door uh, by the end of the uh, track. So now we're going to have to see what's going to happen when they switch places. This and time, uh, this time, you know, as like the qualify, you know, I didn't see Matsuyama get that close to the wall either. So that kind of shows that He's not, you know, he might be leaning towards, you know, trying to get away from the chase car a little bit. But uh, still, we're going to have to see how Kusaba is going to lead and uh, how Matsuyama is going to give chase. Exactly. Just like you said, Kusaba is in the lead. Matsuyama is going to be in the chase. I got to say, I really love Kusaba in this car. It's a huge improvement, and it's definitely showcasing his driving skills because he's definitely stepped it up from the struggles he had with the Supra. So here he is in his brand new GR86. Both brand new GR86s running down the straight here through the 321. Kusaba initiating. Nice job coming around. Let's see if he can be early on into that outer zone one. Not too bad. Dipping a tire though right there by Kusaba. And look at that. Matsuyama Whoa. keeping that close proximity through the touch and go into that outer zone. Oh! Woo! Oh, woo! What oh, a man, save, oh, what man. a save, what a save. Looks like. Man, uh, Matsuyama made the right decision right there. <laughs> oh, man. If Matsuyama would have committed to it. Yeah. There was some contact, I believe, um, by the drivers right there. But um, that was obvious where I think the mistake was made by Kusaba as the lead car. Right there. So as you can see. Kusaba was a little late going into the outside zone too, which basically he, he said realized to, yeah, it, yeah. his line was way off and he probably said, oh man, I, I, that was a mistake that he made. The good thing is, is he didn't try to correct because I think it was too late to make oh, that man, correction. Oh no, man, if he made the correction, man, his car would have probably uh, went to the front left or something. I think when you get to a point like this, spinning out might be, you know, the way to go to avoid um, any further uh, damage, but very similar run on the lead. A little bit of a tire dip um, by Kusaba. Look, everything looked really well, but right there, if Kusaba would have done a, a flick harder and quicker uh, after the touch and go, maybe that wouldn't have happened, but uh, it did happen, so it is what it is. And you know what? It looks like, man, what is going on today? Like, we're having, you know, there's some slight contacts here and there, but, you know, the cars look like nothing. No damage. Yeah. Are we playing with RC cars? It looks like it <laughs> at this point. But we'll see here. There you go. Ooh, Whoa. Coming in hot in the like, hey, they're not three. supposed to go there. That's I mean, like, hey, the, the hard, park, uh, hard park competition. <laughs> How close they're going to yeah, get. Back, back in, yeah. Egger going with Matsuyama, Nishida going with Matsuyama. So it looks like Hokuto Matsuyama will be getting the win and move on to the top 16. Congratulations, the points leader currently for the Formula Just Japan se series is moving into the top 16. Kusaba, good battle, uh, great job, uh, but could not put together a good enough lead run. Uh, hopefully um, he can get the car situated and we'll see him back at the final round at Fuji. Next round coming up, it's going to be against number 530, Wataru Masuyama, going against Shinichi Mano. Masuyama, last event at Okubuki, took first. He let's, did. Let's see how he's going to do this time. 
and, and see if he'll move on to the top 16. And Mono, another young driver, a privateer. Oh. Looks like we got a pylon touch. And also you can notice Masuyama this time around has new livery setup. He was all white with the green good ride. This time they uh, incorporate him like color, the team. Yeah. Yep. But, I mean, Masuyama, man, Masuyama's a, a FD, current FD USA driver, right? He is. Come on, don't hit the cones. You know better than that. Well, he heard you talking earlier, and he's like, I want to be the next person that gets it. All right, it's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like the pylon touch or the jumping because it kind of throws you off. Um, it happened to me before too, uh -oh. as a chase driver, when you kind of think like you have a good launch or something, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, nope, you gotta do it again. And I mean, honestly, some people might even do it for tactics, you know, but who knows? So let's go ahead and check this out. Looks like Mono has a big jump, huge yeah, jump. Yeah, but point. look at that, he gave too much back to him right here. So Masayama coming around early on, nice job, dipping the tire, but filling the zone early on. Ripping back around through the touch and go, and Mono definitely made a huge mistake coming up to that outer zone one, just not getting back on it. It looks like he uh, definitely gave him too much from the start and just couldn't gain any proximity to him. Yeah, Mono, um, it's really hard, the launch. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, um, the timing and everything is very, very hard at the start because that could actually end that run. Uh, one bad start could actually, you know, turn things around real quick. So um, right there, Mono left behind, not even in the same screen. Yeah, this is um, just straight up an inactive chase right there. Just nowhere yeah. to be found. I mean, I think he's trying, but um, it's not working out. See right there, a little late back on the throttle for Mono. And just, yeah, slowly just getting gapped. Thought we were watching practice there for a second. Yeah, this is warm up. No, I'm just kidding. It's not warm up. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Mono did not uh, launch accordingly, I guess, the way he should have. And there might have been a mistake at the start, which, you know, and, and there are, you know, grip differences and, you know, power differences, which could create the gap as well. Uh, but, when you leave the line earlier as the chase car, damn, look at that. That car looks good. And look, look at that toe in and positive camper on the back. Um, but um, yeah, the launch, if you launch too early, you're gonna have to wait for the lead car to pass you. And when the last, when the passing car is in their power band or on boost or something, and they just go and uh, you hesitate or if you don't launch correctly, as you're rolling, you know, that could actually uh, create a big gap too. You can see how his car squats, bringing that camber back in. Here he is coming around. Right now, Masayama is sitting fourth overall in points at a 212. He's got to keep, look at that close proximity that he's doing all the way around, keeping it an active tandem battle here throughout his own three. Whoa. Nice job by Masayama. Whoa. Holding back a little, look at that little bit of contact it looked like right there. Uh oh. Oh. We'll have to check that out. Maybe a little too aggressive by Masuyama coming around, leaving outer zone three and transitioning through that inside clip. Yeah, now we're going to have to see this. I'm not sure if there was contact or not, but we do have to make sure that there was no contact. Um, watching the replay right here. Oh, no, he just spun out. I let's check out this drone footage right here. Make sure double check, triple check, allowing these judges to make the right call. Here you go. This is the view I want to see right here. This is where you're really going to tell. I love technology. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely makes a world of difference. Look at that close proximity right there. Not only to outer zone three, yeah. but. Hey, oh, now, wow. now, now you can't. 
Now you can't fake it. <laughs> nope, you can. That was a very nice, very nice chase run right there by Masuyama. Edgar going left, Nishida going left. So Wataru Masuyama gets the win and we'll be moving on to the top 16. Ooh, so Masuyama is going to be going against uh, the points leader Matsuyama. That's this gonna is going to be a tongue twister for you. It is. It's Masuyama gonna... Matsuyama. It's going to be a good one. It really is. I'll just go driver A, driver B. So Matsuyama going against Masuyama. We're going to go ahead and clean up this inside clip region and the finish line right here. You can see all that grass that kicked in to the course. Hands down to the Okayama International Circuit staff. Look at that right there. Look at the precision on that broom. I know. See, see you can't clown on it. Look at that. Yeah, Look at you know it. what? Um, somebody sent me a message. They're saying, you know, um, they're going to give me a case of brooms to bring back with me after Irwindale, but <laughs> this one works good, you know? Got some fans out here. Oh, wait. You should bring some to them. There you go, and just hand it out to the staff out there. At, I mean, it is Halloween. They can use it dual purpose if they want. <laughs> There's the fans right there out here. This is right under the, or actually right to the left hey, of... You know, we, this facility is really big, so we have people spread out, but we have a good amount of people here this time. Yes, and um, if you are out here, just keep in mind behind the grandstands, the green, blue, and red grandstands, that's where we have all the vendors booth. Go check out the vendors. And then later on in between top 32, top 16, they're going to have the FMX uh, bikers out there. They're going to be doing backflips, you know, supermans, all that stuff or all on their jump. So Yeah, it's going to be really amazing to see if you've never seen it. Um, and then this is the grandstand yeah, to people the are really waving. What's up, left. guys? What is up? They can't hear you, Robbie. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you still Imamura's mic, I think they can hear you. Yeah. We can steal the U.S.'s thing and you can start the wave. They'll be like, what? And a what wave? They'll go you take know, the wave them? does not happen that much in Japan. Well, Even though we're an island it's and not really there's a, a lot of ocean around us, the wave doesn't happen so much. Well, it's kind of a bad sign here if, any, if you, you know what I mean? Well, you know, I mean, Japanese people in general are not that hype, you know, very subtle, you know, calm and collecting, I guess. So, you know, that's why I'm the weirdo when I'm... But know, they're kind of animated, crowd. though, at the same time. But yeah. yes, I know what you are. They, they kind of have a shell and they don't break out. Robbie's but, like the... But, but when you get it, you know, when you get them out of that shell... Um, Japanese people can get pretty wild too because you know Robbie's the b best of both worlds but he yeah. kind oh, of there you go. doesn't have a shell <laughs> they're playing games See, now they're now. playing with the camera see there you go hey, now look at yes at least he's zooming on his face <laughs> and if you don't know who Yoichi Mamura is go look him up this yeah, is look XD1 up. champ right here he's a legend he, he knows is. what he's doing he's a very very uh, good driver and uh, he's joined the uh, Formula Drift Japan series for quite a while now as a judge. Um, so, very cool guy. Um, and he still has it in him because I got to ride along. I think I rode along with you, and he was in at 8-6 uh, chasing us at Fuji. We went there. We had an FD yeah. Japan day where kind of the staff went out and had a good time, got to drift their cars, yeah. do their own thing. And, yeah, Robbie and him went out there, and they went a little wild. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, Imamura is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's like, he never made it to FDUS, but, you know, I did. It's all right. He can't hear us, so it's all good. Yeah, I know. I could talk all the smack I want, but here you go. Um, you know, a little different from um, the Formula Drift USA series. Um, we have a burnout box, but it's pretty far out. We can't have it on the straightaway here because it's the international track. And the track doesn't want us to do the burnouts on the straightaway. So we have um, an area that they were able to let us use um, to burn, do the burnouts um, right before the short stretch, before the last turn of this track. So there's a little bit of a gap for uh, a little bit of time for the cars to get to the start line. 
But looks like they're coming up ready to go. This is our next battle, our second to last battle for top 32. It's going to be against number 87. Very famous driver here, Daigo Saito, known for that huge jump in his JZX100 and everything he's done and ex-champ in the U.S. So going against Manabu Fujinaka in his three-rotor RX-7 Mean Machine. Yeah, so the Saito name, the third Saito in um, the other two Saitos made it to the top 16. Uh, so let's see if this Saito is going to, or is it going to be Fujinaka? Both very, very aggressive, aggressive driver. Looks like they're ready to go. Coming through the chicane now. Approaching the Dunlop sign. 3-2-1. And look at that. Daigo coming in real hot from the jump. Just yeah, getting to the outer zone line. right there. Coming around through the touch and go. And man, Fujinaka trying to buckle down and close this proximity. Not quite able to get all the way out to that outer zone three. And man, Daigo doing man. what he does best, throwing down. You know, that's impressive because that was a lot of speed coming in. Yes. Uh, which doesn't really matter uh, for us as judges to see. But being able to handle it uh, taking the car all the way to the outside zone with fairly good enough angle um, is very, very hard. And uh, looks like Daigo Saito does a good job uh, doing that. And now Fujinaka, don't get me wrong, this is not a slow driver either. Uh, but Fujinaka doing everything he can uh, to close that proximity uh, between these cars. But uh, looks like the gap that was created on the straightaway uh, stays the same throughout the track. And it looks like Fujinaka's even trying to uh, get closer by running a smaller and a shallower line throughout the track. I so got now, it. now we're going to have to see what Saito is going to do behind Fujinaka. Yeah, I got to say, Daigo had the recipe for disaster whenever it came to other drivers coming with that much speed in the outer zone one. But like you said, the experience level that he has, he was able to control it. He knows this car very well. He does a lot of practice sessions with it. Um, and also, I mean, he built the car. So he really understands it and he built it to his liking. So right there, that's his typical driving style is coming in very aggressive and being a, you know, a showman guy for the uh, spectators out here. Very aggressive looking GR86 built at Fat Five Racing, uh, which is the shop owned by Daigo Saito. And uh, Fujinaka, I'm pretty sure he said he's in this chassis 10 years plus. So that's his baby that he's driving. Now let's see what's going to happen. Now that the drivers are switching places. Fujinaka. Not able to fill all of outer zone one right there. Here they are coming to the touch of Look at that, Daigo dialing it in right here, being real deep in that outer zone three and keeping that nice proximity throughout the course. Not bumping doors or anything, but definitely keeping that close proximity to Fujinaka. Wow. Um... Fujinaka, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that he's not uh, slow in by any means, but Daigo Saito not giving him any space, and, I and got it even looks like Fujinaka's running a slightly smaller and shallower line up until outside zone three, and uh, Saito not giving him any room to run away. Yes, and Fujinaka, father of Oe, Oe already making it into the top 16 but is his dad gonna be able to follow suit and maybe they could battle out because both of them are on the right side of the bracket. Ooh. But I don't know, Daigo is definitely a tough competitor to one go against, but to beat. Here you go, Eggert going with Daigo Saito, Nishida going with Saito, and looks like Daigo Saito is gonna get the win and move on to the top 16. Yeah, very impressive driving by Saito, but I'd have to say Fujinaka, um, he did all he can this time, but uh, hopefully he comes back in Fuji for better results and good luck to him. So here we are, our last battle of the morning. Rolling up close to the afternoon. We're almost hitting 11 o'clock here local time. It's going to be against Kazuya Matsukawa going against Tetsuya Iha. Iha in the big body 200 series crown while you have Matsukawa in the old school. A85, here he is ripping oh. around. Looks like Matsukawa had a little correction there. And man, Iha struggling oh. and 
huge correction in that chase. So Iha knocking himself out early on right there in that chase. But we'll have to see Matsukawa's replay there entering into outer zone one. But overall, not a clean final battle here for the top 32. We'll see what Iha's gonna do in the lead. And here's yeah, that replay. Yeah, so let's go ahead and check that out right. Oh, hey, he was still drifting. He did dip a tire. That was a really bad line, but right there, Iha straightens uh, out the outside zone one area. So uh, that's an incomplete, most likely, for the chase car. Um, not a good line and not a good lead at the beginning of the uh, track by uh, Matsukawa, but it uh, didn't look like he straightened fully, so... Uh, that's going to be, we're not putting points, but that will be a deduction if that was uh, points. And that's the biggest thing is overall they catch is all the deductions to kind of make their final call for how it is. But at the end of the day, it's a lead to lead, chase to chase, cross yeah, comparison. It, it, it's really hard to explain, but it is on, it's not just how many mistakes you make throughout the run, but it's also uh, how well you executed uh, whatever you're supposed to do. And also... Even if there's mistakes, it really depends on how major it is, too. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just a collective um, of, you know, just the data that we see and that we know. Um, and we go by experience as well. So, um, yeah, judging is really tough. But, you know, honestly, the FDJ uh, judges here and, I, uh, you know, the former of USA judges, I mean, everybody does a great job. And that's why these battles are great to see. Obviously, you know, th thanks to the drivers and the teams, too. Exactly. And here we are, Iha in the lead in his crown. Oh, you have Matsi Matsukawa going around in his A85, ripping in his GR-powered 85. Here he is coming around in the chase position. Oh, no! Able to hold on right there. Reverse entry into that outer zone three, but... Not ideal being in that chase position. I still don't know how he saved himself right there. Oh, man. All right, so lead run by Iha. Does a good job on outside zone one. I really like that. Not a crazy amount of angle, but he does. Oh, man. All right, so I'm going to have to collect data now. This uh, is the last qualify run right here for top 32. We have 15 drivers ready to move on. Who is going to fill that last slot? Is it going to be Matsukawa or is it going to be Iha? Matsukawa coming from down the road from Hiroshima while you have Iha coming all the way from Okinawa. All right. Here's that drone footage right here. And here's that reverse entry by him. Able to save himself. Ooh. And you could see how his line was off, so he had to kind of straighten up there through that inside uh, part of outer zone three. Well, let's see. All right, I think they're going to give us a side-by-side. -side, um, at the end of the day, Iha and Matsukawa almost eliminated themselves in the chase. Yeah, so now we're going to have to concentrate on the lead runs. So let's see here. Ish. So right now, Ishikawa, his teammate for the Hiroshima Toyota, Hiroshima Toyota Team Droopy, he's already in it. He's waiting to see if his... Other teammates going to make it Matsukawa. And you can see right there how Iha straightened through outer zone one, pretty much knocking his chase run out. Yeah, so it looks like um, right now, as um, I'm comparing in my head, Matsukawa looked like he was tighter on the inside clip. He looked like he did a better job on the outside zone three. Uh, he did dip tires off at outside zone one, but he was a little bit more aggressive as a, uh, a lead run, a lead driver. Now, Iha did a good job on line uh, outside zone one, but he didn't look too aggressive on angle. 
and uh, the pace was a lot slower too. Let's go ahead and check out um, the side-by-side. -side. There you go. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, you can see right there, yeehaw. he kind of corrected coming in that outer zone three right there. Yeah, so let's say if we're just counting mistakes, there's one more on one of the drivers and one less on the other driver. So we'll see, like I said, this is a final run right here. There you go, Egger going left. Nishida going left, and Imamura, all three judges going with Kazuya Matsukawa getting the win, filling that last slot into the top 16. So yes, uh, not the way I'm pretty sure that Matsukawa wanted to win. Um, let's say we, if even if the outside zone three, there was a huge, huge correction by Matsukawa, even if that was an incomplete and uh, Iha incomplete on the chase, we're just looking at the lead runs. And uh, even if it was that, uh, looked like Iha uh, made more corrections uh, than Matsukawa. I know Matsukawa made, uh, went in a little bit too much at the outside zone one and uh, dipped the tire, but Iha, I think the only good area that he had was the line on the outside zone one, but not throwing too much angle and uh, also, how can I say it, not so quick on the transitions, uh, correction at the outside zone three, and I'm pretty sure that's why all the judges went with uh, Matsukawa this time. So uh, better luck uh, better luck for Iha next time, and uh, hope to see him in Fuji. Yeah, not the cleanest finish we wanted to see in the top 32, but hey, we got through it. We got through our top 32. Still a little chilly out. Overcast skies are kind of holding out for us, so it's looking pretty good. We're going to have about a hour, almost two-hour break, I believe. We're going to be coming back at local time. It's going to be 12.20. So actually, we have about an hour and 20-minute break in between. So go get something to eat. We're going to get a pit report in before we get to the yeah. last commercials. Let's call Marina. Marina Chong. はい、こちらピーマリリンです。山下光一選手のために え、去年、おととし、ま、優勝もできてるんで、ただ今シリーズ的にはちょっとね、あの上の方にいないんで、ここ一歩一歩でも大事に戦って、え、勝ちたいですね。で、最終戦を望めればと。今までの今日までの様
enjoys the top 16 battle to see who is going to be the winner here at round five of the G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Series here at the Okoyama International Circuit. So I think we're gonna be back in about an hour or so, a little over an hour or so. Uh, make sure you don't miss the top 16 because watching the battles that we just saw, uh, it's gonna just get better and better and uh, interested to see uh, what's gonna happen and who's gonna be winning and being on top of the podium. Uh, so we're gonna take a quick break in between this and uh, we'll see you guys back here shortly. Peace out. See y'all later. <laughs> Oh, right there. Oh, wait, Camera's we're over, over there. there. All right, so we see you guys later. Peace out. Formula Drift Japan. Yokohama. The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid, Valentine. Japan. Breed. Tento to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshiku. Champion of Tortame no Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. 
究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダこんにちは。